has walked where angels trod. When you kiss your little baby, you kiss the face of God. The blind will see, the deaf will hear, the dead will live again. The lame will leave, the dumb will speak, the praises of the Welcome to worship at Aldersgate Church. My name is Hannah Pratt Sledge, and I'm so thankful that you're choosing to worship with us this morning. This is the last Sunday before Christmas, and we hope that your anticipation to celebrate the birth of Jesus is growing this Sunday and throughout the week. We wanna let you know about some upcoming uh, worship and fun activities that we have this week to celebrate Christmas. The first is that tonight at 6.30, we are going to have an Illuminate service, a service of light and dark, where we will reflect on how to experience joy this Christmas. We'll be having this service via Zoom, so watch for a post on Facebook today with a way to sign up to receive the Zoom link to be a part of this service at 6.30 tonight. Also, at 6.30 p.m. on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, we're going to have different fun events that will be posted on our Facebook page that you're not going to want to miss to be a part of the celebration of Christmas. And then on Christmas Eve at 4 o'clock, we will offer an online worship service service here and on our website and YouTube channel. And then weather permitting, we will gather outside at seven o'clock and 11 p.m. to celebrate Christmas Eve together. Today, we're going to talk about peace. And I can think of no better word that we need in our lives right now, today. So to begin today, Bob and Joni Sharp are going to light the fourth Advent candle, the candle of peace. Good morning. And welcome to the fourth Sunday of Admin. Welcome into our home. We're the Sharps. I'm Bob. This is my wife, Joni. Over the past three weeks, Pastor Jan has talked about our hope, look up, Mary's faith, look in, and joyful news, look forward. Today, we talk about peace. Peace is a greeting that is filled with love and grace. Peace is a popular word with a variety of meanings. It can mean absence of war or conflict or it can refer to rest. The biblical meaning of peace is more than an absence of conflict or a state of rest. It is a completeness and it points to the presence of something better, peace with God. Jesus is our peace with God. He is the way to peace with others and peace within ourselves. During this crazy year of COVID, we think that everyone is looking for peace. It could be peace of mind, peace of spirit, peace with others, or peace within ourselves. Personally, Joni and I try to get out and walk every day and enjoy God's creations. And that helps give us peace of mind and spirit. We both believe that if you dedicate your life to God, he will bring that peace into your life. We feel that when you are at peace with yourself, you are better able to help family, friends, and neighbors who might be searching for peace in their lives. We have made many socially distant, safe contacts with our neighbors during our walks that would not have happened before. We've had time to look around and greet others who are also out working in their gardens or walking that we had never met or noticed before. This has been a true blessing. This week, as, a, as we add the word peace to our kites, this will remind us to remember to look around and see Jesus with us here and now and in our world today. Today, our Bible verse is from Matthew chapter 1, verse 23. They shall call his name Emmanuel, which translated means God is with us. As we light the fourth candle, we light it with peace in our hearts for the promise of proximity the nearness of God. Even when we forget to listen, to lean into that presence, God is as close as our own breath. This, in a confused and confusing world, is a peace that passes all understanding. It is a peace that knows the company is coming. 
O come, O come, Emmanuel. Let us pray. Dear Father, you are Emmanuel, God with us. I come to you for peace as I look around my community. Help us to know you are here in our world and to be your presence for others to see. Amen. Many blessings to you and your, you and your family. Merry Christmas. Gloria in excelsis Deo, in excelsis Deo. Peace on earth, there is
on last week's episode of This Is Us. You came. Mom and I just finished watching one of our favorite Christmas movies, and we have so many fun ideas on how to bring you Christmas joy. Oh, you look wonderful. Such a happy little elf. I am not eating that concoction. I am not. I am not having fun. There's not much for me to feel joyful about. Not this year. You better watch out. You better not cry. You better not pout. I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to town. I hope you two are enjoying yourself. I'm going home. I'm done. Welcome, friend. Holly, what have you done to yourself? Look at your hair and your clothes. Have you lost your mind? Oh, friend, we just lighten up. It's almost Christmas Eve. We're just trying to have some fun. Holly, oh, Holly, look at this. This is ridiculous. I mean, it's all so gaudy. No taste. Martha Stewart would be gagging. Come on. I thought I'd bring Max, but Max, let's go. We we don't need to stay here. You might get some tinsel on you. No, wait, Aunt Friend. I haven't seen Max in a really long time. Come here, buddy. Well, just for a minute, Nick. And Max, don't get any tinsel on you. Oh, this is uh, too much. Friend, why are you, dare I say it, so grinchy? It seems that she hates Christmas the whole Christmas season, and I don't know why, I won't ask the reason, but it could be that her shoes are too tight, or perhaps that her head isn't screwed on just quite right. But perhaps the truest reason of all is that your heart is two sizes too small. But whatever the reason, your heart or your shoes, you sit in this season hating Holly Lou Who. Mom, that was awesome. Really? Are you done? Because I don't need to be the brunt of your jokes, Holly. Oh, I'm sorry, Fran. I just couldn't resist. I'm so tired of being the grinchy, grump aunt and sister and being the butt of all your jokes, especially now and in all of this hoopla. It's not, it's just not a good time, Holly. Not when the world is the way it is. Oh, Fran. I know it's been a difficult year, but there's still so much we can do, even when we feel so unsettled or the world feels upside down. Well, I don't know what to do. The world is upside down for me. You know, Aunt Fran, my mom says when you don't know what to do for yourself, do something for someone else. Well, aren't you just the little Saint Nick? Fran. Actually, we were just getting ready to bake some cookies when you stopped by. Would you care to join us? You know, Mom, I know this girl at school. She's kind of weird. Actually, a lot of weird. But she started this cookie challenge where she bakes and collects cookies to donate to shelters and food pantries. Maybe we could give her some of our cookies this year. That sounds like an excellent idea, Nick. What a great way to look around and share the love of Jesus. Let's go bake some cookies! <sighs> I guess. Aunt Fran, can we make Max a cookie too? Sure. He's been such a good boy. He deserves a cookie. He's been really my only real friend lately. Or maybe a dozen cookies. It's hard work being her friend. I heard that. Mom, how about I pack up the cookies we already have done and take them over to that girl Chelsea's house? I can drop them off on her front porch. That sounds great, Nikki Poo. Nikki Poo? You know, Holly, decorating these cookies makes me remember when you and I were little and we decorate cookies with Mom. They were good times. I miss those times. Can we set them out for Santa before we go to bed? Yeah. They were good Christmases. I miss them, Holly. 
I miss the people. I miss the togetherness. It was also easy, not hard like now. Those were some pretty great Christmases. Now, and now this is just miserable, miserable, miserable. Oh, Fran. But at least we still have each other. And we can find peace in our time together and peace in what we do together. I mean, we can definitely find peace in Jesus. He's kind of got that down. You know what, Fran? Why don't you join us for Christmas Eve? I have big plans. It's going to be a special, amazing Christmas Eve for Nick. Over the top. And then you can join us for Christmas Eve worship. Holly, if you're in charge and decorating, oh, I know it will be over the top. <laughs> just remember, Fran, Christmas Day will always be just as long as we have we. And don't forget, come in your pajamas. Pajamas? Oh, no. Pajamas. All right. See you later. We hope that you are enjoying these videos of Aldersgate's edition of This Is Us. And we just want to take a moment this morning to thank you, to thank you for your incredible generosity. You saw in the video that Nick shares cookies with his neighbors, and you've been doing that throughout the months of COVID, participating in the cookie challenge. You have shown incredible generosity with the virtual giving tree that finished up this past week, and with the live nativity where we were able to reach over a thousand people in our community to share the Christmas story with them. We've been thrilled to see the reverse Advent boxes coming in and to see pictures that you're posting of those of you who are doing the Advent curriculum together. And it's just been an incredible blessing to journey through Advent together as a church community. So thank you for your continued generosity that allows all of these incredible projects of hope and love and joy and peace to continue. And we just ask that as the year end approaches, is that you continue to remember Aldersgate and your generosity. And we thank you for the gift it is to partner with you. Let's pray this morning. Almighty God, we thank you for your incredible love for us. God, we thank you that we can give because you have given so much to us. Help us to be wise stewards of all that you've given us. Help us to be generous this Christ Christmas season. Open our hearts and minds and hands to give to those around us. Continue to increase our love and hope and joy and peace that we find in your son Jesus, in whose name we pray, amen. Growing up, we had this plastic nativity set that looked kind of like this one. And perhaps some of you have an experience with a plastic nativity set. There's many great advantages to a nativity set like this one. It's lightweight, easy to store and set up, but it has one major downfall, the wind. So picture this, it's a cold December night, you've gone to bed, you can hear the wind howling outside, and you wake up in the morning to look out at your nativity set and you realize that baby Jesus is missing. The wind has blown baby Jesus right out of the nativity set. And then you have to begin the frantic, sometimes humiliating process of going to all of your different neighbors and saying, excuse me, have you seen Jesus? The wind was really rough last night. I think baby Jesus might be in your back bushes. I'm sorry to bother you, but have you seen Jesus? I tell you this story because the question is what's important to us today. Have you seen Jesus? Amongst all of the planning and preparation for Christmas, amongst the online shopping and creative family gathering planning this year, have you slowed down enough to see Jesus? 
I was just talking with my husband, Chris, about this. Every year at Advent, I think I'm going to slow down to really celebrate the anticipation of the birth of Jesus. But every year I seem to get caught up in so many different things and perhaps you can relate. And so today, before it's too late, before Christmas is here, I want us all to take a moment to slow down to see Jesus. I don't want us to miss the peace of Christmas this year because if we miss the peace, we miss risking seeing the miracle of Christmas. So I want to begin today by hearing these beautiful words uh, read to us by the Phil Kosky family out of Luke 2. And as you uh, listen and watch this story unfold, ask yourself one question, who do you see? So Joseph went up from the town of Nazareth to Galilee, to Judea, to, the, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged in the house line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to marry to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, it's time for the baby to be born. She would give birth to her fourth, first born. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloth and placed him in a manger because there were no guest rooms available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find the baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory, Glory to God, God in the highest heaven, heaven and, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels have left them, gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who were lying in a manger. When they see him, this, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And who all heard were amazed what the shepherds could have said to them. I want to thank the Phil Cosby family for that incredible video. And as you were watching that, asking the question, who do you see? I thought about this nativity set that I have. That's actually one of my favorite nativity sets that I got when I was on a mission trip in Uganda. And so when I think about the Christmas story and who do I see? Well, we see Joseph, right? Joseph, who is anxious. Joseph's is a first time dad and he's anxious about all the new responsibilities that that entitles. In fact, he's not just a first time dad to any kid, but to a child the angel said would be the very son of God. Who do you see? Well, we see Mary and Mary is exhausted. She's worn out from her long travel to Bethlehem from the process of labor. You see Mary tired at the manger scene. Who do you see? We see the shepherds who the scripture tells us were terrified. The first words the angels has to say to the shepherds is do not be afraid. The shepherds were just minding their own business, working the night shift when the angels interrupted them and they were terrified. I imagine that the hearts were still pounding as they approached the manger. Who do you see? We see the angels who proclaim good news of great joy, peace on earth to whom God's favor rests. And who do you see that at the center of the nativity scene, you see Jesus who shall be called 
wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. At the center of the nativity scene, you find Jesus, you find peace. Look around, look around at your family, your circle, your bubble this year, this Christmas. Who do you see? You're not going to see Mary and Joseph and shepherds and angels, but my guess is that you will see anxious, exhausted, terrified people in your life. When I look around my family circle this Christmas, I see anxious first time and second time parents. I see my nieces and nephews and their parents anxious and stressed out about Zoom and virtual school and online working. I see essential healthcare workers who are exhausted, putting themselves and their families at risk of COVID every single day. I see my grandmother terrified, living alone in a nursing home, struggling to remember the names of her own children. These are some of the people I see in my life this Christmas. And who do you see in your life? My guess is that I'm not alone in seeing anxious, exhausted, terrified people in my life. And I want you to take one step deeper this morning and to look yourself in the mirror and to ask the same question. Who do you see? Do you see deep lines of worry and anxiety on your face, dark circles under your eyes from many sleepless nights worrying about your family and your job and your finances? Who do you see this Christmas? And then if we could take one more step together and zoom out and ask ourselves that same question, who do you see, but to ask it to our neighborhood, our community, to the world around us, who do you see who's anxious, exhausted, terrified this Christmas? And let's come at this question in light of the nativity scene. Let's think about if we set up as accurate depiction of the nativity scene as we could this year, who would we see? Who would be there? Well, you'd have young first time parents who were soon to become refugees as Mary and Joseph ran for their lives in Egypt. You would see blue collar workers struggling to make ends meet, working the night shift in the shepherds. If we included the wise men, you'd see wealthy, wise CEOs stepping off their corporate jets from afar. You would see Middle Easterners and Asians and Africans all brought together in one diverse, beautiful scene. But you see, all of these people had one thing in common. All of them were looking for Jesus. And all of them came with their anxieties, their terrors, their frustrations, their exhaustion. They couldn't help themselves. That was just the burden, the condition of their human hearts. But they brought all of that with them to the manger. And when they saw Jesus, they placed their burdens at the feet of Jesus. And they saw in Jesus' eyes what their hearts had long desired. They found peace. Look, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a child and she will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. The miracle of Christmas is that God chose to enter the chaos of our lives to give us peace. The miracle of Christmas is that God chose to put on skin and bones and flesh to live and move among us, to, to experience the fullness of what it means to be human, to surrender to birth and death, to surrender to joy and sorrow, exaltation and pain. Jesus knew all of what it meant to be human, and yet he remained the prince of peace. And the good news of Christmas is that Jesus shall be called Emmanuel, God with us. And this promise of Emmanuel is not a temporary promise. It's not just limited to the Christmas season. No, this is an e eternal promise that God is always with us. This means no matter what we face, God is with us. No matter the anxieties or the exhaustion or the terror that we face, God is with us. No matter how long COVID lasts, God is with us. No matter if we can gather with our families or not this year for Christmas, God is with us. And this, my friends, is incredibly good news because it means 
that because God's presence is always with us, we can always experience peace. That peace is not just something that we can frantically look for or wish for on some distant star. No, peace is something that's here, present, available to us at every moment in our lives. That Jesus comes to offer us peace. And so friends, I don't want you to miss the peace of Christmas this year or else you risk missing the miracle of God's presence with us. So I know this is gonna be a really different kind of Christmas. There's still just as many Hallmark movies and Christmas trees and Christmas cookies and even more online shopping. But there just aren't as many Christmas gatherings to attend or Christmas concerts to go to or white elephant gift exchanges to be had. There's just not as quite as much hustle and bustle this Christmas season. But I don't want any of us to miss this once in a lifetime opportunity that we have. Because I think this may be the simplest Christmas of our lifetimes. This might be our greatest chance to truly enjoy the peace of Christmas. And so I don't want us to waste this opportunity, but I want us all to experience peace this Christmas season. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, I'm gonna challenge you simply to sit still. So wherever you are watching this right now, if you can just sit still to stop frantically pacing about or to stop scrolling or distracting yourself, whatever else you're doing, or maybe at the end of worship today, I just invite you to turn off the video and to sit still. And maybe you're on your couch in your living room or in a different place in your house. And I just invite you to slowly gaze around the room in which you're seated. And I want you to look perhaps for maybe a nativity scene or an ornament on your Christmas tree that has a picture of baby Jesus on it. And I just want you to look at Jesus and to soften your gaze. So often we frantically go about our lives with this harsh or critical great gaze, not actually really even looking people in the eyes. And if we slow down and soften our gaze, the eyes become the window to the soul that we can really begin to get to know each other better and see what's going on. And when we soften our gaze, we become what we look at. And so as followers of Jesus, we need to glance and to gaze at Jesus this Christmas and ask Jesus to be our Prince of Peace. So I want you to look at that nativity scene or that ornament and to ask Jesus to be your Prince of Peace, to be the peace that your heart so desperately longs for this Christmas. And to sit still and soften your gaze for as long as that takes. And then the last step is to share the peace that you experience with others. The beautiful gift of peace is not meant to be kept to ourselves, but to be shared with others. And who knows what that looks like for you. Maybe you begin with sharing peace with yourself, that you challenge yourself that over the next several days leading up to Christmas, I'm just gonna take five minutes to sit still, to soften my gaze, and to focus on Jesus's peaceful presence in my life, just to clear away all the clutter and the chaos, to focus on my breath, to allow my thoughts just to melt like snowflakes on warm pavement and to focus on Jesus's presence with me. Maybe you invite other people in your household to join you in this calm, quiet, peaceful practice. Maybe that's unrealistic for you. And so maybe you do other things to make your home feel peaceful. Maybe you light a Christmas candle or bake Christmas cookies or watch a Christmas movie together as your family. Maybe you have a technology-free evening where you all turn off your cell phones or heaven forbid you take work email off of your phone for the Christmas, for the week of Christmas and just see what peace that might bring you. Maybe you call up a friend or get somebody on Zoom and just listen to their story to offer them a moment of peace. Or maybe you share Christmas cookies with a neighbor and leave it on their doorstep. Whatever it is, share peace with the people that you see around you this Christmas. If you've been following along with This Is Us, you've noticed that Fran and Holly are completely missing the peace of Christmas. 
Aunt Fran is so caught up in her own anxieties and sorrow about COVID that she can't experience peace. And Holly is so caught up in what's left of the hustle and bustle that she's not experiencing peace. But Nick, who decides to give cookies to those in need, he's the one who experiences peace when he shares it with others. Now friends, we can't control the end of Fran and Holly and Nick's story. In fact, that's already been written and recorded and we have two more episodes for you on Christmas Eve is one and then on the December 27th. But we can have some say in our stories that we get to co-author our stories with the Prince of Peace. And so I don't want you to miss out on that this Christmas. I want you to be still to soften your gaze and to share the peace of Christ with others. Because friends, don't miss the peace of Christmas or else you risk missing the miracle of God's presence with us. I wanna close our time together this morning by giving us a chance to experience peace. So I'm gonna offer a brief, brief prayer for us. And at the end, I'm going to read the words of Psalm 4610. And each time I read the words, I'm going to drop off one more word. And I just invite you right now, wherever you're at, to close your eyes, to be still, to focus on your breathing, to allow your thoughts to settle, and to enter into this time of peace in God's presence. Let's pray. God, we thank you for the miracle of Christmas. God, we thank you for your promise that you are always with us. This Christmas, don't let us miss the peace that you bring. Help us to sit still, to soften our gaze, and to share your peace with others. God, in this moment, May we experience your peace together as we hear these ancient, beautiful words of the psalm. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am. Be still and know that I. Be still and know that. Be still and know. Be still and. Be still. Be. Amen and amen.